The AMA Moving Medicine podcast highlights innovation and emerging issues that impact physicians and patients today. I'm your host, Todd Unger, Chief Experience Officer at the AMA. Hello, this is the American Medical Association's Moving Medicine video and podcast. Today, we're talking about gaps that learners experience in the transition between medical school and residency and what the AMA is doing to address them. I'm joined today by Dr. Kimberly Lomas, AMA's Vice President for Undergraduate Medical Education Innovations in Nashville, and Dr. Meg Wolf, Associate Program Director at the University of Michigan Pediatric Residency Program and Associate Professor of Emergency Medicine and Pediatrics at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. I'm Todd Unger, AMA's Chief Experience Officer in Chicago. Well, Dr. Wolf, let's start with you. Uh, I think we were hoping as we headed into this next academic year that we'd have the pandemic behind us, but does not appear to be as so yet. Uh, and so I'd love to know how educators like you are thinking about the transition from undergraduate to graduate medical education and what concerns you have about gaps in training with your new residents. Thanks so much for asking that question. That is such an important issue. Um, we are really excited to have our learners here. Our new interns just started. Um, they are very excited to be here, but as you can imagine, really nervous because their training was very different than any other medical school training before them. Um, so we're really just trying to help them get their bearings and, and figure out what they missed and, and what we need to do to get them started. Dr. Wolf, what would you say like the biggest, you know, missing thing is, uh, or even in the minds of these incoming residents, what do you feel like they missed the most? To be honest, Todd, they are really just lacking confidence that they've had enough experience to hit the ground running. They have They're, it. They have all the experience they need, but... Uh, but honestly, the confidence is the big thing. Dr. Lomas, is this one of, uh, you know, is this a new thing in terms of this, you know, the issue that we experience in, in transitions? Or is this another thing uh, that we put in the bucket of always existed, always been a problem, the pandemic, pandemic really exposed uh, another issue? Which, which is it? That's exactly the, the point, Todd. This is one of many things that the pandemic just shone a light on and, and created exacerbation. There's been concern around this transition for quite some time. The AMA has been working on that. And Dr. Wolf has been part of our emphasis on coaching programs and other efforts to try to ameliorate this, this rocky transition from one realm to another. Uh, and it's been a, con a consortium interest for some time, but then of course we added our reimagining residency projects in 2019 and several of those are anchored squarely on this point. And so we have a great community of both the UME and GME leaders who are helping to think this through. It's also been a point of focus recently for the Coalition for Physician Accountability to really ensure that we do everything possible to make our learners ultimately ready for their, for their roles as interns. Dr. Lewis, why don't we speak a little bit more in detail about what that work looks like. One of the uh, outcomes of this has been something called the Personal Priorities in Transitions Pilot. Can you describe what that is and you know, what the outcomes are that you're looking for? Sure. You know, we had, as a consortium, we've been looking at this notion of a very formal handover from the medical school to the residency program. But in the context of pandemic, what we really understood was that this is about a conversation, to really establish a conversation between the learner and their receiving residency program. And so temporarily, we actually haven't involved the school. This is an informed self-assessment. And that informed word is important because it encourages the learner to reflect on the feedback that they've gotten, not just thinking off the top of their head, but looking at the comments from certain experiences, feedback they've gotten from their faculty to really identify for themselves where they stand in certain areas that we know are critical at this time of transition. It is not about trying to uncover weaknesses or expose performance deficits. It's really talking about the variation in experience that is true from the clinical learning environment and helping the learner identify those areas and make a plan. Uh, so it's really taking advantage of the pandemic because everybody's disrupted, everyone's feeling uncertain to say, let's just talk about it and get a plan in place and work together. Kim, I'm so glad. Yeah, go ahead. I'm so glad, Kim, that you used the, the term informed self-assessment because it really is 
um, the time for them to, to reflect on all the things that they've learned in medical school, but also really to look at all the data that's been generated and, and really help them identify what are the areas that they want to work on and what are the ways in which their training was modified because of the pandemic that they really want to jumpstart uh, their experience into residency for. Dr. Wolf, uh, thinking about this pilot, you know, what are the advantages uh, uh, from a program perspective? I think from a program perspective, it would be so nice to have had a learner who has had time to reflect on where they've been in their training and where they want to go and really come to the table with a sense of where their areas are that they want to develop on and where they feel like their strengths are. It allows us an opportunity to really um, customize where we're able, uh, but more than that helps us um, uh, develop goals with them and helps identify resources that they can use in tandem with their training. Medicine doesn't stand still, and at the AMA, neither do we. AMA members are physicians like you who are shaping the future of medicine. Become a member today and join the movement. Visit ama-assn.org slash movingmedicine. And Dr. Lomas, when, you know, when's the right time for a learner to complete a self-assessment of readiness for the transition into re residency? So ideally, these conversations would be happening all throughout medical school. And, and as I said, Dr. Wolf is involved in some of our work around coaching that would help facilitate that process. But in reality, not all schools have the resources to do that yet and or have not implemented those programs yet. Many schools do have an intern prep kind of course in the final year of training. Some of those this past year were virtual, some in person, you know, it, was, it obviously was disrupted as well. So our program this year is, is really targeting that window from the final months of medical school to really beginning internship. Now that's a busy window. These are people who are, are celebrating graduation, hopefully to some extent, uh, and moving uh, to new cities often. And so there's a lot of things going on, but it's a good opportunity to shift that mental model from focus on grades and what people think of your performance as it's written in a resume or on an application and really think about readiness. So they, at a point in time where they have all that information, as, as Meg alluded to, they have the information to look back on their performance and they immediately feel that, that push of, hey, this is real, I'm gonna be taking care of patients. And so this is the, the perfect timing for this personal reflective process that we're coaching them through. And Dr. Wolf, obviously the identifying gaps piece is the, uh, an important foundation. Uh, how do you take that knowledge then and how to develop programs that will help residents fill all those gaps? You know, that's a, that's something that the residents are often wondering about, you know, what is the point of doing this? It's not like uh, I can choose my own adventure at every stage of residency. There's some things that have to be completed and, and requirements for everyone, but that doesn't mean that there aren't ways that we can help them customize things or help them focus on different things as they're going through their, their required rotations. Um, there's always opportunities for goal setting and seeking out opportunities and then using resources right along with their training. Um, the AMA has a host of resources that can be really helpful for learners depending, depending on the areas that they're trying to work on. Dr. Lomas, when you look at the big picture and you see uh, the learnings that flow out of a pilot like this. How do you how do you think that will then in turn benefit UME and GME as a whole? We're definitely viewing this first year as a learning experience for us. We put together with experts a, a draft model, and what we're really curious to learn is how the learners interact with that. A big part of this is safety. They need to really feel safe in the conversation and have trust that we're trying to foster their development and it's not some um, hidden critique of, of their abilities. And so one of the things we're asking is whether they are willing to share. The learners who participate have control over whether they share either their assessment or their plan with their program. And so one of the things we're going to learn is, is how safe do people feel with that sharing? Did it happen? We'll, be, we'll have the opportunity with the numbers that have been completed to get a sense of what kinds of gaps are most common, what things people feel like they don't have experience in, that maybe we could then allow programs to know that for future years to incorporate 
more emphasis and orientation. And then it also gives us an opportunity to think as the AMA of what additional resources can we build out? We do have some as part of our AMA GME comp competency education program that really emphasize these changes in roles that, and we have made those resources available to those who are participating in the pilot. But I think we're gonna identify new topics that might require some amplification then we can build better resources for next year. Yeah, I'm curious about that. I mean, we started this conversation out talking about uh, the pandemic and the influence of that. Uh, do you think that these gaps are gonna change uh, hopefully, you know, a year from now, do you expect, how do you, you know, keep learning about where that gap, uh, those gaps will evolve to once we're out of what hopefully uh, will be the pandemic situation? Well, that's what's really exciting to think more explicitly about readiness as opposed to performance and grades uh, to really, because that can evolve with time. I think that the needs, the gaps that were created in the past year are obviously gonna be slightly different. However, I think across the board, there's been a long recognition that as students work in different clinical environments, different rotations with different supervisors, there is significant variation in what they get to practice and what kind of feedback they get. And so a model like this allows them to identify that, but also allows us to see over time, what are those needs and make adjustments accordingly. Dr. Lomas, the AMA's, uh, you know, been kind of capturing this knowledge over the past uh, year and a half to develop some uh, new resources. Can you talk about uh, some of those and how they fit into your ongoing work in medical education? Sure. In, in June, we launched a new program, the AMA U UME Curricular Enrichment Program, which is really in response to the accelerated need for high quality digital learning resources and platforms. We had had developed many of those tools for specific new evolving areas of competency. So this is not meant to replace what medical schools typically do, but it's an easy way to fill gaps in curriculum around key topics, particularly things like health system science that we're very invested in. And so we're proud to have that program. We've been enriching our uh, platform Frida, which was very helpful during disruption to students to really help to understand what their options were moving forward. And we've seen more uptake of our AMA GME competency education program that we discussed a bit earlier that many institutions have started utilizing these platforms. So there's plenty of plenty of growth for us and still much need that we can we can work to meet. I encourage uh, those that are interested out there to check out more information on the UME curricular enrichment program on the AMA's Ed Hub. We'll put the URL up now so you can take a look at what that is, but edhub.ama-assn.org slash ama-ume-program. Um, you know, last question, if uh, programs are interested in learning more or getting involved in the personal priorities and transition pilot, uh, what should they do, Dr. Lomas? So I think they can reach out to us specifically at and I'll give you an email address here. It's gme at ama-assn.org to learn more about the pilot. But I bounced it back to Dr. Wolf. I think that every program can just be thinking about how do they create this space for the conversation. I don't know if you want to comment on that, Meg. Absolutely. I think even if you're not involved in this program uh, initially, uh, there's so many opportunities to meet with your residents as they're coming in and just give them an opportunity to reflect on all of the things that they have done so far and what their goals and priorities are and help work with them to develop a plan uh, to really help them hit the ground running and feel comfortable, comfortable and confident uh, as they start residency. And that, that word is so important. Uh, I figure if you can make it through this transition in a pandemic, uh, you're quite strong. So thank you both for being here, Dr. Wolf, Dr. Lomas. Really appreciate your perspective and the work that you're doing on this pilot. Uh, that's it for today's Moving Medicine video and podcast. We'll be back with another segment shortly. Uh, you can join us for future episodes and podcasts of Moving Medicine by subscribing at ama-assn.org slash podcasts. Thanks for joining us. Take care. I'm Todd Unger, and this has been Moving Medicine, a podcast by the American Medical Association. You can subscribe to Moving Medicine and other great AMA podcasts anywhere you listen to yours, or visit ama-assn.org slash podcasts. Thank you for listening.